Hello. I wanted to share with you um, some of the phonics that we've been doing with the children because that will be a big help as they start to bring their reading books home. Ever since um, your children started in reception, we have been working on phonics and we have been learning letter sounds um, so that we can blend these letter sounds together to read. Um, we don't learn the letter sounds in the alphabetical order, we learn them in an order that means the first few letters that can be made into lots and lots of words so that even children who only know the first few sounds can begin to start to blend sounds together um, to read. So we've been working through these phase two sounds um, since we since we started, since we were settled in um, later in September. Um, if your child was at nursery, they'll have done um, a lot of phase one phonics and phase one phonics is a lot about listening um, and rhymes and rhythms and hearing sounds at the beginning of words, um, a little bit of blending by hearing the words, um, getting ready to learn phonics and then blending those together. So when we do learn the phonics, we learn these letter sounds um, in a particular way. We learn the pure sound that it's called. And by learning the pure sound, they are so much easier to blend together, to push together, to make a word. So um, none of our sounds have a kind of uh sound at the end of it. We don't have any m or d or t because um, if you can imagine putting words together that've got that uh sound on them, it's very, very hard to blend. So what we do is we have we learn what's called the pure sound. So if I show you with the example of the first three sounds here, where we have s, a, t, s, a, t, we can say those quickly and put them together. We use robot arms as we blend s, a, t, sat, okay, which would be so much harder if we were going s, a, t, t. OK, it just makes it harder to blend. So let's go through these pure sounds so you know what they sound like. When we do them with the children, we make sure that the children understand where the sounds are being made. Because some children really struggle to articulate the sounds, to say the sounds. Um, so if they know where the sound is coming from and they can you know, form their tongue and hold their cheeks and lips in the right position, then they're much then they're much more likely to be able to say the sound successfully. So I'll go through the phase two phonemes first, and this is what they sound like. S, a, t, p, i, n, g. another k and another k. The children will get used to um, where two letters go together to make one sound. These are called digraphs, two letters, one sound. And when they go to their next phonics phase, phase three, there are in fact some trigraphs as well where we have three letters that make one sound, like for example, I, which we've been looking at recently. D, mm. e, o, digraph, e, holding our tongue, e. Then from there, we go on to phase three, where there's some single sounds, but more of these phonemes are now digraphs and trigraphs, where we're getting groups of letters to make a sound. But if I just run through these as pure sounds as well, you'll know how they sounded. J, v, Mm, 
So there there's two, two forms of the th and th. So one in, one out, and th. Mm. A, E, I, O, the O sound is in book, o, and balloon, o. So, o, o, a bit like a cuckoo there. R, O, O, ow, oi, ear, air, o, and o at the end. So those are the main phonemes that we learn during the reception year. And they're the most common form of those sounds. When um, the children go through into year one and year two, they start looking at phase five and beyond. And that's where you have different ways of making the same sound. Because as we all know, English is very complicated in that way. In each phonics lesson, as well as listening for the sounds, and saying them and practicing drawing them, and making the letter shapes to our friends. We also do word blending, which is starting to put those phonemes together to blend to read. So in this case, we've got our little phoneme buttons here. And as we press the phoneme buttons, we say that sound. G -ap. G -ap. That we would do it our fit with our robot arms as well. G -a -p -g -a -p. Again here. It. It. Pit. And then a longer phoneme button this time because it's a digraph, but still just three sounds that we're blending together here. B -a -k. B -a -k. Back. Okay. We started with the very simplest ones like this. Just starting with two phonemes to put together at and it and its and it. Lots of short words that we could blend easily. So once we're up and running with those and we practice writing them as well, because we go into our writing through phone through um, using our phonics too, then we are ready to tackle our books. And as you know, the children are beginning to bring home their reading books because now um, they've developed a confident knowledge of the phonemes or some of the phonemes. We're still practicing them daily to make sure that they're embedded in here. So I thought I would show you one of our reading books and how we might tackle um, reading together. Um, when, you, when your child brings the book home, they'll bring this, their book, and they'll bring a little reading record as well which um, you can put a little note in each time you read with them. We, we really love to see that. It's great to know that you're, that you're sharing together. But please don't worry about making big comments on such. Just positive comments is best, OK? Because this is, this is early for, um, for children. This is their, their early learning, and they are having to do a lot of work up here, a lot of cognitive work, we say, as they're learning to read. They're using lots of skills at the same time. So patience is a virtue, definitely, as we're starting to learn to read. Patience and being supportive too. OK, so this is one of one typically one of the books that we'll bring home. This is one of the phonics bug books. Um, and these are what we call decodable books. So. Um, the majority, most of the words can simply be um, be worked out by putting the phonemes and then blending them together. So this one, Kit's Kip. This is Sid. You'll see Sid in a few of the stories. And this is his cat, Kit. Or Kit, rather. <laughs> and Kit is going to have a kip in the story, as you can imagine. But as your... Um, as, as your child brings the, brings the book home, you might want to have a little talk about what you see on the cover. Who's this? Who's that? What's going to happen in the story? You might like to do a little bit of predicting about what's going to happen. And then realise that this is the title. This is what the story's called. And it gives us a big clue to what the story's about. These phonics bug books, then if you want to, you can have a little go at practicing some of the phonemes there. We'll tell you the key phonemes, the important ones in the story. You can practice some reading some of the words that are going to come up in the story. 
And then there may be a word like this, what we call the tricky words. Now, the tricky words are the words that you can't sound out. So if we were to put these two letters together, if we were to blend them, we'd be going to off top which it doesn't say does it it says to and like I've said before and lots of people say English is a tricky language and there are some words that won't be you won't be able to sound out and as the children work through the phases of phonics they will develop um, a bigger repertoire of these tricky words but this is one of the early ones in phase two we have I the to, go, know and into. They're the first set of tricky words and you will find them in some of these early readers. We do practice those in phonics time as well. And um, so the children should be developing a knowledge of those. So that one's two there. Title page again, here's Kit. And it's the story of Kit's Kit. So then as we approach the story, here we are into the first page. Um, we'll take time to have a look at the picture. There's quite a lot going on in this picture here, lots of clues to the story. We don't know who this chap is here. I'm not sure who we know who these two are, but we do, I suppose we know about Sid because he's in lots of the stories. And here's Cheeky Kit peeking over the side of the cot. There's even a little bit of text in the picture as well. If you wanted to point that out, that says dan dance dan's cot cot over there, and there's the title on the book as well. So you might have a little chat and say, "Oh, who's there in the story? What do you think's happening?" Mm, that dog's looking out of one eye. He's looking at. See, he's not very happy about what's happening, is he? So we might have a little chat about what's going on there before we head down to the text at the bottom, the words at the bottom. Always encourage the children to use a pointing finger, which we usually call it a magic pointing finger, to point at the words, the phonemes as we go along. So we don't get lost. OK, so we'll start straight away with this first word here, three phonemes. Blending those together. Then on to the next word. Look, there's a little gap between them. It's, is, kit, is. Sometimes we repeat back the phrases that we've said already to keep the sense of the sentence. In, in, kit, is, in. Ooh, now that is a tricky letter there, isn't it? Because it's a capital letter. So we would point that out and say, yes, that's the capital D or D. Um, and that's there because it's a name. It's the name of the little boy here in the story. That's right. It's D -a -n, D -a -n, Dan. And there's this at the end, Dan's. Kit is in Dan's. Cot. And now at that point, the child might say cot already. They might have realised that this is a cot and they'll have seen that and they will guess already that he's in that um, dance cot and that's absolutely fine if they're guessing that word already that's brilliant you don't have to then blend it again that's fine they've got they've got the gist of the story so kit is in dance cot always tend to read the line back again just to make sure that they've got the sense before we then move on through the story and and pad Who's Pad? Who do you think Pad is? We know that's Sid and we know that's Dan, so it's going to be this dog here. And actually, look, he's got it on his collar. So there's lots of little bits of text in the pictures as well, words to spot there. Pad, tap, tap, tap. Let's put that on the end. S, taps, s, it, Sid. If I haven't said it before, what we tend to do if we've got these words ending in S here, is we tend to blend the first three and then add the S on the end. So tap, tap, s, and then becomes taps. Okay, it's much easier rather than blending the four in a row. 
at this stage, the children are very used to blending three sounds together. Four is a little bit more complicated. As they become more confident with their reading, they will do that. But at this stage, we tend to blend three and then add the other sounds on. So Pad taps Sid. Ooh, he's not very happy, is he? And oh, here we go on that next page. Somebody's cross. They're all looking a bit perplexed, aren't they? <laughs> there. Um, and down here, we've actually got some speech bubbles here, which you can, um, sorry, some speech marks, which you can always say is, um, this means somebody's talking here, but we don't worry too much about the punctuation at this stage. But it's always, it's fun to pick it up because actually the children do like it, especially the exclamation marks, because the exclamation marks mean that you use an excited voice or a louder voice. So, Oh, it's an exclamation mark. Let's say it a bit louder. Kit. OK. And then capital letter, obviously, again, tricky because they probably don't know this one. Not so familiar with this one. So that's a capital N, N, OT, NOT, IN, IN. Capital D again. Do you remember that one from before? D, A, N, DAN. This one, S, put that on the end. DAN's, COT. Probably remember COT from before. Don't worry if they don't. Still easy to blend. Cot, cot. These books have got quite interesting pictures within them. They're quite lively and colourful. And this one here has got a little speech or thought bubble here. I don't think Kit's talking, but he's certainly thinking, oh, Cat's got to kip. He's a little bit annoyed, isn't he, at being told to move. And uh, you can look at some of the expressions in the story. How's Sid feeling at this moment in time? And how's Kit feeling? Kit's not feeling very happy at all, is he? He's likely to get thrown out. And Sid's not happy that he's in his little brother's cot. So you can talk about some of those characters' feelings as you go along. Well, Kit obviously is a, quite a strong-willed cat because he decides that he's not bothered about being told by Sid. And he naps it, Kit. Nap, nap, and then put that on the end, naps. So, Pad calls in the big guns, who obviously in this family is Nan. And um, here we've got her name here with the capital N again. Pad got Nan. I blend that one for you. So, here comes trouble. You could talk about, well, what's Nan going to do? Why is Pad gone to tell Nan? And here we are already at the end of the story. Here's Kit thinking, oh no, it's got an exclamation mark and he's, he's not happy, is he? Nan! Oh my goodness, she's the boss. And down here, just got one extra word to a couple of the sentences we had earlier. K it, kit, it's, is, n -ot, not, not. In, dance, dance, cot. This time, Kit is not in Dan's cot. Whereas actually, uh, earlier in the story, we had got the um, sentence about, as we'd started, Kit is in Dan's cot. So there's some repetition of words. Some words repeat themselves. There's lots of um, repetition of the phonemes. Um, this is one of our earlier books, so it's not using a huge range of the phonemes. But obviously, we realise that once the children know the first um, 12 or 14 phonemes, then they're able to start reading a text like this, OK, because they are familiar with these ones. We just have to support them with the capital letters. We have to support them with blending. And if you if you'd like to, you can have a look at the punctuation as well. These books have a little um, section at the end uh, with questions. If you want to look back on the story, um, like this one here, what does Kit the cat do that you shouldn't do? So um, as well as actually reading the story, we're checking that the children are understanding what the story is about as well, because. Obviously, we want the children to enjoy the stories they're reading um, and 
make them enthusiastic about the next stories. Um, and we're always, always trying to work on that language development, um, them explaining um, and predicting as well. All those skills that we then use for reading and writing in the future. So I really hope that you enjoy the books that um, we send home with your children. I hope you enjoy some time together with them. My advice would be to read Every day is tricky, every other day definitely, okay? Make sure you do it nice and regularly. Find a quiet spot. I know some houses, I know it can be really, really busy, but please make sure the television's off. Make sure you're sat side by side um, so you can help and you can help with the pointing to the words as well. Try and be patient. Um, don't worry, it's not a race. And support and practice is really important in these early days of reading. Anyway, have fun everyone. Thank you.